Ahoy, mateys! All hands on dick! It wasn't a mistake. It's me, Sar, marooned today with rum and gun, a rip-roaring good time for all aspiring ARPG players out there, a game of a nobler age where men would travel around on boats and fucking kill people, and also would steal computer software. This is a novel concept for an action role-playing game, as this is a realistic concept that isn't a modern setting, but it's not quite an older setting either. It's the cock between two balls. College graduate, and I can respect using this kind of theme. Basically, you're a captain, you crash because because you suck or are shot at, I don't care, and then it's yard time, complete with more of a twin sticks combat kind of approach. Now, I'll be honest, this is a mild game. It's not made by some huge developer, it's not like people are making YouTube guides and freaking the fuck out, it's just like the times of yesteryear where someone passionate crawls out like a bilge rat and starts to heave ho in my porthole and produces a product. A full game, and if you enjoy it or not, that's up to you to decide. And personally, I enjoy anything that feels good, is fun, and has a nice charm, so I'm excited, but let's see if this game has the chops to hang with the big boys. If through its uh, pirate-based gameplay, if Rum and Gun is the best ARPG ever made. So here we go, title screen, and I see that this is version 1.7.0G. What the fuck is G? Game, good, gun, gunk, gregarious, garish, gold, gang, goat, gate, goose, gap, grief, guardian, guide, growth, glimpse, girdle, garden, glow, gasp, gauge, grade, great, great, greet, green, government, guidelines, generation, guaranteed, governance, geological gathering, generosity, grassroots, fast joint, rightis, gravitationally, gentle manliness, latinization, great heartedness. Okay. First person to post the 20th word wins a prize. Rum and gun is unlike other ARPGs in that the bulk of the gameplay involves reloading. If that sounds bad, don't worry, it is not completely is. There is a fun to the risk of having to juggle ammunition and costs in a perspective like this, and it can lead to some interesting combat decisions completely unlike anything I've played in this space. You have a mechanic of gunpowder, a resource that is necessary for any and all gun firing. It can passively regenerate through various means, and you can receive a bulk of it through these Manco supply crates. This means you can't spam forever, but you also need to reload, which involves the real-time button test, where you can greatly increase your reload speed by hitting the R key at the right time, and each gun has a different timing and repetition, and it makes things a little more thought-intensive. And finally, there's several types of guns with differing ways on how to fire them. The spear or rifle variants of weapon involve holding and releasing the mouse to inflict more damage and pierce enemies. The cartoon robber bombs have limited ammo supply. The eggs that spawn enemies, okay, are also limited in use. Really, this is a game you can envision being on the Xbox Live arcade store. It feels like a twin sticks shooter more than an ARPG, and honestly, this is where my complaints will start to ooze out. First, I want to confirm, Rum and Gun seemingly was programmed by one person, so I won't fucking go ape ham on this guy. I will offer fair constructive This game criticism. sucked me major nut and I hate the fucker who made it. It's just a joke, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 Remove gunpowder, though. I feel like systems for this game are constantly annoying me for different reasons, like inventory management. Holy shit, okay, so you have a small square of available inventory, and it's getting hoovered up immediately, constantly, because you don't get to review the items that drop on the ground. Instead, you automatically pick them up when you walk over them, and until you pick them up, you have no idea what the item even is, so I'm not sure why we're reverting back to Diablo 1 item drops, but it's not good. Additionally, when you get an item, you have to purchase it, which thematically makes no sense, and gameplay-wise annoys the piss out of me. There's a balancing decision of letting the player sell items for money straight from the inventory, but as a minor complaint, the hitbox for accepting a sale is strangely small, like my audience's penises. You are not here for sanity, do not act offended. Anyhow, I enjoy a few things about the items in this game, since they are quite distinctly interesting. I may have this wrong, but this is the impression of what I'm seeing, but you have a lineup of weapons like, think Doom or something. Slot 1 is the pistol, slot 2 is the spear, but there are several types of weapons that fit in the same slot, so the spear can be replaced with a rifle, or a trident, or an anchor, each of these having distinct methods of attacking. The machine gun can be different varieties, the blunderbuss can be an arching cannon, the pistol can be a shotgun pistol, and that's cool. It's actually something I've wanted to see in ARPGs for a long time. Dynamic weapon choices and combat feeling. Sadly, the game is a bit basic in regards to combat, which I can forgive. I'm not an evil asshole. Feel free to come to me with ideas, like this shark with a cannon. Well done, friend. That's nice. I like it. What's that? Spiders that jump and have immunity to being one shot? That's fucking trash, you idiot. Suck my left and right nut and my penis and my ass and my- I'll say that I love the enemy creativity and I'm not altogether disliking the setting. You're a pirate whose crew is PU, so you're left alone pretty much, but when you occasionally find pockets of survivors, they can join you. When they start to hoist the flag and fight with you, you quickly realize why your ship sank. It's because these AI crew members are fucking garbage. It may be because I'm playing on the hardest, diffi the hardest difficulty, but they really suck at staying alive, and I'm not convinced they're even that good at dealing damage. To support them, however, is the greatest thing ever developed for an ARPG, the fiddle. You can't look at this shit and tell me it's not the best ARPG ever made. The fiddle consumes your rum, 
Oh, I didn't mention the rum, did I? All right, sorry. Well, that's the other key component of rum and gun. The rum is your means of healing, and you get it by collecting these yellow flasks. Now, I want to say this mechanic is not fun. Healing in this style of game is often an overlooked aspect of design because it's just simple. You're hurt? Well, either stop taking damage or just restore your HP however you want, either through healing potions, life leech, spells, whatever. Well, if you need to use a potion, it's nice to hit a button, know that you've done all you need to do, and then get back to the action. In rum and gun, however, the healing is a channeled ability, meaning you can only heal or attack, not both simultaneously. This is clunky and the hold mechanic just feels bad. Half the time it's a fruitless effort of calculus where I can't possibly outheal the damage I'm taking and I can't get away and if I choose to fight and not heal I will just die immediately. So it makes you not even care about healing which is a cool design in a way. It makes you approach the game more cautiously and different but sometimes you're left without a recourse and you'd like one but the game won't give you one fucking game. I'm telling too madre that you won't give me my recourse back. But maybe the defenses we need lie in the level up systems. Okay here we go. More uniqueness, more fun design. Up to a point, the skill system bothers me somewhat. So when you level, you get a passive skill point, which has nodes represented on this here tree. It's a nice tree, but unlike other ARPGs, you don't choose from here. You're given a randomized selection of four to select from. So it's kind of a roguelike, get lucky and have a great run kind of thing. And that's cool. I like luck. I enjoy that. And some of these things are satisfactory because they aren't all just plus 10 HP, plus 10 gunpowder, which is fair to have. You need some bland, decent enough picks in there. But the unique stuff like guns automatically reload, your perfect attacks increase your damage as long as you don't miss a subsequent perfect attack, enemy distance being relevant, player placement, X, Y, and Z, thumbs up generally here. And something else that's cool is that there can be an absolute drove of enemies and allies on screen all at once. Like, there are more people on these screens than I've met in my entire life as I am a cave-dwelling ogre that preys on the local community. Motherfuckers, I'm coming down there with my club again. Yeah, it's really good. Unlike the stupid-ass ship combat. Yeah, there's boats in this pirate-themed game. How cool is that? It's not cool at all. Shut the fuck up. Firstly, comically, they can control like a car. For example, when's the last time you saw a boat hit a sick ass reverse? Secondly, the boost button, which gives you two seconds of enjoyable boat mobility, and then it robs you of that enjoyability immediately. Finally, there is cannon shooting gameplay, but trying to aim the cannons accurately is like playing castaways from Mario Party 1, and if that reference goes beyond your understanding of gaming, be sure to check out the upcoming C or series with fuckloads of E's in there, finding the best Mario Party. Until then, uh, that's all I can say, the boat sucks ass. You can even commandeer other boats with this grappling hook, but it's not really worth doing, so you know, basically the fact the faster I could get off the boat, the better. Besides a transitional point between Acts 2 and 3 and a completely horrendous battle in Act 4, there's no real usage or enjoyment of ship combat. That also allows me to point out that yes, the game is divided into four acts, but I'll level with you. I don't know or care what the plot of the game is. I am fairly positive that it's not an immensely big deal no matter what, as the humor of the game supersedes any attempt at drama or non-goofiness. And that's something I appreciate. It just so happens that if a game is trying to be fun and lighthearted about demons being angry that you broke their blood pact and something about stealing your liver that I won't invest myself enough to even think about what the plot is at the end of the day. It's for similar reasons the enemy variety shines, since I'm not concerned with what is logically going on, I see no problem with bipedal sharks with cannons, or big wasps, or water golems, or trees. Sky's the limit and the creator made great strides towards fun variety. Except as a gameplay criticism, the enemies are far too accurate and the methods of evading damage are completely no fun at all. You can dodge with large quotation marks because no, you can't. The spear man and the gun man and the whatever the fuck else man are all way too accurate and predictive and their attacks are frankly too large to avoid. And then you can sprint by holding down the dodge button and the running is akin to running with large logs of brown in your porthole as you squaddle run and barely move faster than walking. I just realized I haven't really talked about gear. I'm just talking about dumping in pants. So okay, gear. Besides the fact that you have to annoyingly buy items you find, the stuff you get isn't even fun to use. Half the time the damage is bad. There's some stats that are incomprehensible, like anything to do with socket bonuses or some random stat written like gunpowder 10 slash min. Like what the fuck are you doing to me? Have you no respect that I have no brain? Have you no care that I am dense as a chair? Have you no forgiveness for my large penis? Basically, items were never a great excitement to me. But if you're tired of just playing the ARPG, why not settle down with gambling? We're a degenerate Twitch fuck now, buckos. That's right, here we go, playing dice game that's also needlessly complicated and didn't need to be. Fair enough. Basically, if you can be bothered, this dice game gives you a nice way to boost your economy and make some more money. It's not really worth it, at least I figured. Maybe you need it more later for some endgame concerns? I don't know. As it stands, there's not much else to harp on about. Did I mention spells and sockets though? I don't think I did. Can't be bothered scrolling back up. But here's the skinny. You get gear, it has sockets. You put spells you find into the sockets. It gives you the spell when you have that gun equipped. I tried numerous spells and I didn't find any of them to be that exciting. I had something that turned enemies into bombs when they died. I had like a fire shot. I had, you know, this and that. And it really didn't change the game at all. The word choice and description of these spells in the inventory is absolutely not good and should be quickly improved for fear of people finding them not good. Honestly, I skim these in my inventory and I have absolutely no 
no idea what they're talking about. It just seems incomprehensible. I'm sure there's a logic, but I just lose interest in trying to ascertain what's good for what here. Or if something even works, there's two colors of sockets, seemingly blue and orange, and that must mean something, but I don't know why there's a distinction. There is a distinct lack of distinction in this designation I do deliberate. Dick, 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 dick. Did I mention the in minigame thing? No? Well, good, because I ignored it and have absolutely no idea what it's for or how I would describe it. Sorry, I should be a better game player. I guess I'll offer praise for this interesting little addition. There is a map builder and it gives you all the tools the developer has to produce geography, enemy spawns, props. Basically, it's a sandbox and that's cool. That's something you don't usually get access to. I could not get my head around it and I produced just some utter trash, but maybe you're better at uh, thinking and being and you could make something cool with it. But if it's unclear, if all this swearing and yar har har is not obvious, I do not find Rum and Gun to be the best ARPG ever made. It needs more growth, more development, more improvements, and then it'll be some degree of something good, but for now I have no interest in pursuing it further. It's out of my mind. <laughs> There it goes, gone. But now that our minds are empty, our brains unsaddled with difficulty, it's time to play something new and perhaps something old, something immortal, or dungeons, or two, probably, probably one of those. That's the teaser. Get out of my location now.